everyone. Today we're taking a look back at one of the most successful toy lines in recent history. We are looking at the Masters of the Universe Classics He-Man figure from Matty Collector. Alright, let's go over packaging real quick. And uh, for these Masters of the Universe Classics reviews, I'm not going to show packaging for every single figure as I go through the line. Because one, I don't have packaging for all these figures. I'm not planning on keeping... Uh, all of it, it's all going to go at some point because these aren't resealable. So I'm just going to use the standard He-Man figure. Obviously, this is the He-Man review, uh, but I'm going to use this this packaging for probably most of these and just uh, change it up when necessary as the packaging uh, varies for bigger figures or beasts, etc. So uh, real quick, let's go over this. We've got a uh, mailer box, which is pretty standard for Masters of the Universe Classics. And there's really not a whole lot here to show. It's a box. As far as the packaging goes, uh, this is an empty box for He-Man. This is the reissue packaging. So we've got our logo, and we've got like kind of the lightning bolt style on oh, almost all packaging. Some are a little different, and we'll get to those as needed. Uh, we've got our character name with some uh, Grayskull bricks uh, that kind of make up the, the surrounding packaging and then kind of an Eternia backdrop. And then on the back of the packaging, this, this varies from figure to figure, but we have, you know, a display of figures and then uh, a bio for, for the characters. Now, not all packaging has bios. Um, most do. Towards the end of the line, that stopped, though. Um, so... Pretty standard. This is this is my biggest pet peeve with with these figures, though, at least in a general sense, is that this for a collector line, this packaging was not resealable. So I don't find when I once I've opened these figures, I have a really hard time justifying keeping it because I can't put them back in here and it look good. So you know I do like the mailer box. That's nice for for protecting unopened figures. That's great. But overall, uh, you know I like the design of it. I don't have a problem with the design. It's just if they were going to be collectible, I felt like they should have been in a box uh, that could have been resealed. So let's get into the figure and uh, take a look at him. All right, so here's our, uh, our He-Man figure. And uh, right off the bat, you know, at least when I initially saw this figure, I was pretty much blown away by him. He is an excellent modern kind of retelling of the vintage style He-Man figure. So the Four Horsemen, you know, really put a lot of effort into making this guy look exceptional and make him look similar to the original figure, but, you know, kind of updated for a more modern toy era. So let's go over uh, sculpt and paint and articulation. So probably the most striking difference from this guy to the vintage is, is the head. So they kind of went their own route making a more modern head that kind of blended the vintage with the cartoon. So he doesn't exactly look like the vintage figure. He doesn't exactly look like the cartoon, but you can tell he's got that He-Man style about him. Uh, we've got rotation and a hinge at the, at the neck. As far as shoulders, we've got a hinge and we've got rotation. So he's got, you know, excellent range of motion there. We have a bicep swivel. We have a single jointed elbow. We have rotation. And that is it at the wrist, which kind of is a bit of a problem in terms of posing him sometimes, but overall it's not a big deal. We have an ab crunch, we have waist swivel, we have excellent rotation at the thighs, we have thigh rotation, we have a knee joint, we have a rotation at the boot level, and then we have a hinge at the ankle. Not any kind of rocker action though. So as far as articulation goes, he's kind of got what, you know, would become the standard for a Motu Classics figure. Um, you know, obviously far and away more than what the vintage figures had. Uh, not as much as some other figures, at least not now. You know, we're talking eight years plus later. But still plenty of articulation for posing. As far as the overall scope, sculpt goes, I, I love this figure. You know, there are, there are better figures in the Motu Classics line overall in terms of sculpt. But... This is this is He-Man. This is a great He-Man figure. Great representation of the character. We've got, you know, a solid sculpting on the head. Some people, you know, may or may not like this head versus the vintage figure, but I like him. He he fits well with the line and I think it's a it's a good good attempt at kind of blending the various He-Man uh looks together. You know, a lot of sculpting in the hair. Uh we've got sculpting for the the furry loin loincloth. We got the belt. We've got sculpted gauntlets which are uh, not removable. We have sculpted uh, boots, 
And then kind of the one thing that was a long-standing problem, I think, for a lot of people with this line were these pegs with the ankles that are visible. That eventually gets changed. Uh, I don't really mind them. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me too much. There's plenty of visible pegs all over the characters, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, as far as paint goes, uh, we've got the brown and black boots with solid paint apps. No, no issues on mine. We've got a wash in the in the loincloth. We've got the orange on the belt with some uh, darker accents for the for like the jeweled area, and then a bit of a wash on the gauntlets. And we've got you know paint on the face, yellow hair, and then we've got the armor, which is removable. Um, it just pops off. So I guess you could consider that an accessory. I do not because that's supposed to be on the guy. So it's got good paint apps on it. We get the red uh, cross and then the, the red accents going up and down it. So overall, you know, solid figure. Can't really, can't really complain too much. You know, who doesn't like Heat Man? So let's take a look at the accessories this guy came with. All right, now as far as accessories go, we have kind of the standard spread for what you would expect Heat Man to come with as far as the cartoon and the comics, the mini comics, so, and the vintage figure, obviously. So we've got a power sword, we've got a half power sword, which joins with the other half for Skeletor sword, which I'll show that once we get to Skeletor. We've got his shield, and we've got the axe that are given to him as part of the vestments of He-Man in the mini comics. So, you know, the, uh, you can put stuff in his in his armor. I usually put this, the axe there because, you know, He-Man's always going to have a sword in his hand as far as I'm concerned. The uh, shield will just sort of snap onto his wrist and then you can pop a sword in his hand here and it is a pretty tight grip which is excellent. You know, I've never had an issue with him holding and then, you know, he can hold his sword aloft like He-Man does. Um, I would like, you know, they, they changed this later on in the line with the last he may figure to be released uh, in 2016 for the Filmation line where he can swivel his wrist around better to more accurately hold the sword. But I've never really cared too much. I think it looks fine this way. He, that's, that's, a, that's a solid He-Man pose if there ever was one. So, you know, he comes with exactly what he needs. I don't, I don't know what else you could have, could have really given him to, to not go too far in terms of accessories. So, you know, we get the axe, the shield, the sword, the half sword. All of them have... Uh, some sort of, you know, two-tone accents to it. So the shield has the red that matches the armor, and the sword and the axe have the gray and silver accents on them. So overall, very pleased with accessories. Couldn't, couldn't ask for too much more. Okay, so what's the verdict on this guy? Obviously, He-Man is a humongous property. This line has been going on for eight plus years at this point, and it's so successful to the point where it has even switched companies at this point. Mattel is no longer doing it. Super 7 is now doing it. So if that doesn't say how popular this line is, I don't know what does. I still find that this line is still a bit unknown to a lot of people though. It's, and that, I think that has a lot to do with how it was, how it was handled, how it was distributed, the fact that you can only buy it via Maddie Collector's website, but that's, that's not necessarily something that we need to go into here. Um, overall, this figure is fantastic. Again, this is the, this is the reissue figure, um, for He-Man. This, this, in my opinion, is, uh, the better He-Man figure in terms of the, the standard He-Man for, uh, for Masters Classics. So, there was a bit of a gloss on the first, first run of He-Man, and he also had really red eyes that made him look like he got stung by a bee or had an allergy attack. So, they fixed that. Um, beyond that, this, this figure holds a very special place in the Masters, uh, collection, I don't, I don't think anybody's going to dispute that this is a very pivotal figure in the line. It's the main character. He wasn't the first character. Uh, King Grayskull San Diego Comic-Con exclusive in 2008 was the first character that they, that they released. But in terms of an actual release, He-Man was the first. Um, Masters did, did come a long way over, the, over its run so far. So He-Man's not the best figure in the line. But there's no denying that he is arguably the most important character in the line. Uh, I love how the Four Horsemen handled this figure. I love the sculpting. Uh, the figure has held up very well over eight years. It's been open and displayed in one capacity or another the entire time, and he still has tight joints. I know that was a lot of uh, people's problems for a while, was was joint issues with the line, uh, but my He-Man's been, been fine. I've never had any problems with him. He stands up just fine, and he, he has been holding the sword in the air for years at this point. So uh, I, I, can't, I can't complain too much about this guy. Uh, he 
he looks great. There there are modifications to be made to, to He-Man down the, down the road that we'll get to. Uh, but for for a first attempt in selling a He-Man figure again, you know, in 2008, Mattel and the Four Horsemen just obviously killed it. And how long this line has, has been going is a testament to just how popular He-Man is. Uh, I know I've certainly been a fan since I was in diapers. So, uh, you know, this line is, is pretty much a dream come true for Masters of, of the Universe fans. So um, that's going to do it for this review. There is going to be a lot more Motu Classics uh, coming up. So stay tuned to Toy Bro for, for more uh, reviews and more retrospectives on uh, Masters Classics as I look at some older figures uh, just to kind of go through the collection. So feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And as always, until next time.